Shinra has my daughter now. I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who asked her to go get Marlene. We'd only just met, but she was so kind and helpful. So, something is actually going to change here, another change from the original game. We are going to go back to Sector 7, knowing that you're saying, hey, Sector 7 got destroyed. Well, not quite as much as you were probably thinking. The main entrance to Sector 7 is buried under rubble now. So, how are we supposed to get back inside? Underground passage in the park. Ah, uh, good plan. But how do we get to the park? I know another way to get there. Aerith showed me before. <laughs> this ancient girl knows her stuff. Didn't mean anything by it. One of the cool new features that have come out in the past decade or so is this kind of positional audio system that you're seeing in a lot of games nowadays. Before, it used to be something like an audio file of a character speaking would play when you reach that point in the game where it needs to happen. Okay, so that's great. But it comes across as a little unrealistic in the sense of, say, we're Cloud here, Tifa is standing behind you some ways, and you just hear it coming through both speakers. It's really obvious, especially if you have a surround sound system or you're wearing headphones. Her voice just comes into your head like, um, comes into your head like she's speaking directly in front of you. So what they did was they created this sort of positional audio system where the volume and the way that it comes at you in the stereo speaker setup varies depending on where the character is oriented to your character, your camera, or whatever. Unfortunately, it has a downside of occasionally making it difficult to hear what they're saying, like what happened just now. Tifa was behind Cloud, a little ways away, and it wasn't the audio wasn't implemented all that well. So as she was speaking, the sound sort of jumped from left channel to right channel a few times, and it wasn't very loud, so it doesn't feel natural that that was a conversation that Cloud was having with her. If the player couldn't hear it, or a player had a hard time hearing it, it seems a little odd that Cloud did. Plus, you kind of want to make sure that your characters are heard. There are plenty of games, not just this one, where a conversation happens that I just don't even end up hearing because, well, the character was a little bit far away and I just have to sort of move on with my day because, well, I didn't hear that. Hope it wasn't important. Hmm. Oh, well. I'm uh, Just to repeat, it's a nice feature. I just wish... They put a little bit more effort into making sure that you could hear it. Like, make sure that there was, like, say, a minimum volume, not just have it be completely muted if the character's far enough away. But, you yeah, know, maybe I'm just complaining too much. It's blocked. Duh. There, that way. We'll have to fight our way through. But it's our only shot. Of course we have to fight our way through. Now, in the original game, we never returned to Sector 7, because Sector 7, with the plate, as you saw when I panned the camera up, the plate came completely down, and when that happens, look how much room you people have, jeez. When the plate came down, it, like, encompassed the entire zone. It crushed everything there, there was nothing to go and salvage. There was no, not a chance of any survivors where you go back and rescue. But they... I guess they wanted to have this kind of going back and seeing the wreckage and seeing what happened. That it... They added this part in. So we gotta make this trip back over the Sector 7 and we can't make the abbreviated trip because apparently that tunnel got destroyed. That path got destroyed, so we have to go and run through the old subway again. There was a, a little bit of added backstory in this version of the game where Sector 6 had collapsed at some point. This was before they had finished this... Well, they're not actually finished the city yet. But Sector 6 had collapsed, and they... And that's why this subway system or this uh, tunnel or whatever was abandoned was because it collapsed on top of this then they rebuilt it 
they rebuilt the whole thing. Fortunately, there was a lot less in terms of casualties back then because everything was still under construction. There weren't really people living there. So I guess maybe they sort of set a bit of a precedent where not everything would be completely crushed by a, one of the sector plates collapsing. But it does feel still a little bit strange that that the Sector 7 plate, which was just this large, heavy ceiling over the slums, fell on top of it. And there's anything of note to, uh, to go back and see. This is actually something that I feel that this game is working on fixing a criticism that I had with the original game, which it does, I mean, perhaps they, they went a little overboard in terms of this remake, but the original game, just like a lot of other games, tends to rocket through its story at crazy pace. So, well, okay, Cloud, we sort of get started in the middle of things, and you're starting on the, on the assault on the reactor. Then you come back, then you have the conversation with Tifa and Barrett and stuff, and really the whole thing ends up only taking, if you read at a reasonable pace, the entire scene will take like two minutes. Then you move on, then you go and you attack the next reactor and all of that. Now, I, I guess it's a fine pace for a video game. It's not necessarily a fine pace for like a deeper form of media. But it is a little bit awkward how quickly things go. Now, it's not nearly at the same pace as Final Fantasy VI, which is a game that I criticized for this in my playthrough of it. Because that had tends to like take that to an extreme where you have... Okay, so a character, Tara, shows up at the castle and and Bart walks in and then the two of them share like literally like 20 words. And then he walks out of the room and you're like, what the hell just happened? They're like, oh, I'm the king, that's my brother, brr, brr. And then they move on. And that comes across as so awkward and so such an accelerated thing that it doesn't make any sense that that conversation would happen that way. Final Fantasy VII was actually better at better at this whole thing than VI was. They paced the story better. There was more story to tell, I feel. And it was told a little bit slower. Just slow enough to make it feel more natural. Now, the remake of Seven, These damn thugs again. The remake of Seven slows it down even more because they had to add a lot of stuff if they told this game story the way that they did in the original one it would have ended hours ago so i don't know maybe the balance maybe the proper balance is somewhere between the original seven and the remake of seven in terms of speed it's got a bat with nails stuck out of it <laughs> jeez these damn bandits all over the place. We keep running into these guys. In an attempt to just sort of make these reoccurring characters that will go and... Um, I, you know, I thought that's what they were doing when they created that... Um, that soldier that was the uh, second or third class guy that we ran into when we were trying to steal the explosives. I thought that's what they were creating there. And perhaps we'll see that character again in the future entries into this game. But I thought he was going to be a reoccurring antagonist or secondary antagonist in this game, where we'd see him a few times. He felt like he was a little bit wasted in that regard, because instead of him, we run into these, like, back in the other bandits and all that. And I don't take them seriously as a threat. Actually, I died to him a couple of times earlier in the game when I was fighting them. Because I was unprepared for it. But I don't take them seriously as characters. So the fact that we keep running into them like this is comes across as more of just like a comic relief thing. And that's probably what they were intending. Hm. Oh, oh, wait, no. More monsters. I thought that was more, uh, more of the bandits. 
I wonder if they're going to end up having some kind of, like, a redemption arc or something like that. Because you're going to have these bandits. They're, I doubt they're going to leave Midgar and we're going to see them later on in the game. Outside of Midgar and, like, the field and all that. Like, we're not going to see them in the Crystal Cave or anything. But I wonder if we're going to see them when the characters return to Midgar much later on in the game. Over there! Huh? That a way out! I'm almost afraid to go back. To see it with my own eyes. Tifa. Uh, come on. Hear that? It happened again. Tifa said come on, but she was a pretty good distance away. So, it could barely be heard. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was across the audio channel that I don't... I'm not wearing the headphones, though. So. Never mind. I withdraw my criticism. It's that big robot hand again. Kind of weird that they'd build a tunnel without any kind of... Like, a tunnel's usually, like, completely underground. And... This one doesn't seem to be. <laughs> oh, there are people here. Oh, so we've reached the other side. Alright, so I imagine there would be a lot of survivors that are made just outside of, and that's something that the original game failed to show us. <laughs> Wyma! <sighs> You're alive! Still in one piece? Who else made it out? I wish I knew. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. I'm just glad you survived. Gives me hope for the others. Hmm. Who the hell was this guy again? We can't afford to lose huh. any more lives. Not now. Well, that's gonna happen. They introduced so many new characters, not every one of them made some kind of influence on me. Okay, so there's a character named Betty here. I don't remember that character. I guess she was at the orphanage with the cats or something. Yeah, yeah, she was probably the cat girl. One that uh, wanted us to go and find the cats. Okay, now I remember. <laughs> now I'm bad at this. But anyway, you got all of these different people that are out and about here that were survivors. And this was the, uh, in the original game, it didn't really make any sense. You know, like, I know some people made it out of Sector 7. Some people that just perhaps weren't home at the time. Weren't home at the time that the play collapsed. Or did manage to escape as everything was falling, but you never run into them. You don't see them standing outside the wreckage. You don't run in them other parts of Midgar. So, it, uh, it was always a little bit of like a problem I had with the original game. And they're showing it here. And I guess it's um, more important that you see that you see something that affected the people other than just the wreckage. My God. 